Gardner and now Stantec, together with Council and the Department of Planning and Environment, have recently completed the draft St George's Basin Flood Study as part of the St George's Basin Flood Plain Risk Management Study and Plan. The revised flood study provides an updated understanding of flood behaviour and potential flood impacts. A draft report is now on public exhibition to allow review and comment from the community. The presentation covers the project background and study objectives, model development, design event modelling, results and impacts of flooding and next steps. Previous flood information available for the catchment is from the St George's Basin Flood Study undertaken in 2001 using older software and methods. Council are taking the opportunity to update the flood study using the latest industry standards, updated software and survey information, additional flood data for calibration and expanding the model extents to improve the accuracy and currency of the flood information. Objectives of the study are to provide Council with up-to-date flood information, define flood behaviour under existing conditions and consider future flood risk due to the potential impacts of climate change, including sea level rise and increased rainfall, and impacts of flooding on the community, flood planning levels, flood damages and emergency response considerations. The flood study will be used as the basis for the flood plain risk management study and plan to identify emergency response measures and other critical flood information required for the state emergency services as part of flood response action to identify potential emergency management, planning and flood mitigation solutions for the floodplain, and develop a plan for priority implementation of identified risk management measures. The St George's Basin has a catchment area of approximately 355 square kilometres with almost 10% of the catchment area covered by the basin itself. The catchment contains a number of creeks, including Pats Creek, Home Creek, Wandanian Creek, Tomarong Creek, Cow Creek, Tullawalla Creek, and Warrowing Creek. Wandandian Creek and Tomarong Creek are the largest tributaries along the basin. The upstream end of the catchment rises to an elevation of approximately 650 metres above Australian height data and is 24 kilometres away from the basin. The catchment starts from east of Braywood Road and follows an easterly direction to St George's Basin. The study area comprises of St George's Basin itself, the Sussex Inlet Channel Estuary Area, Sussex Inlet and upstream residential areas around the basin and along the tributary creeks. The basin connects to the ocean through the Sussex Inlet Channel and there are no recorded periods of closure of the basin's entrance. Major towns in the study area are Sussex Inlet, Basin View, St George's Basin, Sanctuary Point, Warrow Wing Heights, Old Arrowall Bay, Arrowall Bay, Broome Beach and Wrights Beach. Wandandian and Tomarong. A number of instances of flooding have been reported in the St George's Basin catchment since the 1950s in low-lying foreshore areas around St George's Basin and Sussex Inlet. The Sussex Inlet and the Sanctuary Point townships in particular can be inundated for a couple of days. No significant flood events in the catchment occurred in March 1959, October 1959, February 1971, June 1991, and August 2015. The recent March 22 event was the fourth largest on record. There have also been a number of years that have experienced minor flooding. Council have undertaken a number of previous studies in the catchment, including the 2001 St George's Basin Flood Study to define flood behaviour, the 2006 St George's Basin Flood Plain Risk Management Study and Plan to investigate flood mitigation and management options, and the 2013 Floodplain Risk Management Study and Plan Climate Change Assessment to assess impacts on flood levels with sea level rise and increased rainfall. Consultation with the community and stakeholders is an important component in the development of a flood study. Consultation provides an opportunity to collect information from observed flood events and to get feedback and observations from the community on problem areas and potential floodplain management measures. Community consultation to date has included Council's Get Involved website with relevant information about the study and a community questionnaire in 2019 where the community was asked to provide information about their flood experiences including historical flood observations and the community was also asked about their preferences for different types of flood mitigation options. 55 responses were recorded from the online consultation with a subset providing flood depths for historical events. Relevant stakeholder agencies have also been corresponded with to obtain relevant data and flood information for use in the study. 
Further community consultation will be undertaken in future stages of the study for comment on the draft flood study as well as the draft floodplain risk management study and plan. The flood study update builds on previous studies and available data has been reviewed to inform the study, to provide data to set up the models and to allow testing of the model's performance. Where insufficient data was available, additional data was collected such as additional survey and up-to-date rainfall and water level data. The flood model has been developed with a hydrological model and a hydraulic model. A hydrological model uses, is used to simulate the conversion of rainfall into runoff to calculate flows within the catchment. St George's Basin hydrological model has been developed using the Watershed Bounded Network model or WBNM software. St George's Basin catchment was divided into subcatchments using terrain data and catchments assessed for their characteristics such as slope, land use, vegetation cover and impervious areas such as roads and buildings to allow assignment of model parameters reflective of current conditions to each subcatchment. Model parameters have been selected through a process of calibration and validation against measured water levels from historical events. A hydraulic model is used to simulate the flow of water through a catchment and associated waterways to calculate flood characteristics such as water level and velocity of flow. The St George's Basin hydraulic model uses two flow software, which is a two dimensional hydraulic model to represent the waterways and floodplains within the study area the Basin and Sussex Inlet Channel to the Tasman Sea, the lower reaches of the tributaries flowing into the Basin and all floodplain areas. Model setup includes aerial laser survey data collected in 2010 in combination with ground survey and bathymetric data to develop a digital elevation model of the topography bathymetry in the study area. A layer delineating the study area into different material types to assign a hydraulic roughness, which is a measure of the surface resistance to flow. Structures such as bridges and culverts under roads, most of which were surveyed as part of the project. Inflows from hydrological model shown in blue and a tidal boundary condition at the ocean. The model now set up to allow simulation of flood events. The model was then calibrated to ensure it was able to provide a good representation of historical events. Model calibration is an essential step in the flood modelling process to confirm that the model can reproduce observations and measurements from historical flood events to demonstrate the model's ability to reliably simulate expected flood behaviour in the study area. The August 2015 event was selected for calibration with the June 2013 February 1971 events selected for validation. Recorded rainfall and water level gauge data was used for the August 2015 event calibration, along with flood marks surveyed by Council after the event, and community observations from community consultation. Calibration uses recorded timing and spatial distribution of rainfall data as inputs to the hydrology model to generate flows. However, there are no flow gauges in the catchment to compare the results with the recorded flow pattern and magnitude. The historical event flows calculated in the hydrological model are used as inputs to the hydraulic model along with tidal data from Jarvis Bay gauge at the ocean boundary. The flood model results are compared with recorded and observed flood levels and model parameters are adjusted to achieve a better match to recorded data. After an iterative process of adjustment of model parameters, a good correlation with the timing, shape and peak of water levels was achieved at both the Sussex Inlet and Island Point road gauge within the study area, with peak water levels slightly lower than gauged. For the August 2015 calibration event, modelled flood levels showed a good correlation with peak water levels slightly lower than recorded by around 100 mm in the basin and 55 mm in Sussex Inlet. The average difference between predicted and surveyed peak levels is calculated to be 60 mm and most values are within 110 millimetres. For the validation events, the calibrated model also compared well with gauge flood levels to within plus or minus 80 millimetres. Following the calibration and validation, the study moved into the design flood estimation phase with confidence that the hydrology and hydraulic models provide a good representation of flooding in the catchment. 
Design events are estimated from theoretical rainfall events that are defined by an annual exceedance probability, or AEP, which is the statistical probability of occurrence. That is, the probability that a flood of a given magnitude will be experienced in any one year. Design flood estimates for the study have been developed using the latest industry standard, Australian Rainfall and Runoff 2019, and the design events modelled for the flood study include the 20% AEP, 10% AEP, 5% AEP, 2% AEP, 1% AEP, 0.2% AEP, and the probable maximum flood event. Scenarios include the existing baseline scenario with current rainfall and sea level, along with projected 2050 and projected 2100 sea level rise scenarios using the Shoalhaven City Council sea level rise policy, which adopts 230 mm sea level rise by 2050 and 360 mm in 2100. Looking at modelled flood depth results, flows largely remain within the Sussex Inlet Channel for flows up to the 20% AEP event with some minor flooding of properties along River Road between Thora Street and Gordon Street, but there is no overflow flooding of properties. Sanctuary Point is an area with existing flood risk and damages in frequent events, with 13 properties affected in the 20% AEP event, primarily on the Park Drive adjacent to Tomoron Creek upstream of Lama Avenue Bridge. In this area, water backs up behind the Lama Avenue Bridge, inundating properties and bypassing to the south through properties and via channels either side of the oval. More significant flooding is expected in the 5% AEP event with flood debts increasing and around 50 properties in the Sanctuary Point area and 30 in Sussex Inlet affected. Properties in Warrawing and Old Arrowall Bay begin to be affected along Prentice Avenue and McGowan Street. Flood extents change dramatically when flow is out of bank in the 2% AEP event and rarer events, affecting low-lying foreshore areas around St George's Basin. This change is largely driven by the high ocean tide level, which causes a reduction in the capacity of the outlet channel. Extensive overflow flooding occurs in the 2% AEP, with some 200 properties impacted as the Sussex Inlet Channel swells to inundate the areas north of Jacobs Drive and east of Sandpiper Way and along Fairview Crescent. Evacuation would become cut off from these areas as Jacobs Drive and River Road become inundated. Almost 100 properties would be affected in Sanctuary Point around the Park Drive and Mountain Street. The number of properties affected in Warrowing and Old Barrowall Bay increases to almost 20, while a small number of properties around the foreshore are also impacted. For the 1% AEP event, greater depths are again seen, increasing the flood extents, with the major additional impacts occurring in Sussex Inlet, with a small increase in affected properties in other areas. The probable maximum flood affects large areas of the St George's Basin floodplain as well as the tributaries and overland flow areas with large flow depths across the study area. This plot shows flood level difference for a 1% AEP event with a projected 2050 sea level rise. The blue areas indicate areas with increased flood levels. Sea level rise predominantly affects Sussex Inlet and the low-lying areas around the basin foreshore. There are no impacts as a result of sea level rise on what water levels in Wandanian Creek beyond the Princes Highway or Tomaron Creek beyond the Wool Road. The Shalhaven City Council projected 2050 sea level rise of 230mm results in typically less than 100mm of water level increase in the Basin and Sussex Inlet, with up to 200mm closer to the entrance. The flood level difference for the Shoalhaven City Council projected 2100 sea level rise of 360 millimetres results in typically less than 200 millimetres of water level increase, with around 300 millimetres closer to the entrance, and again, no impacts upstream of the basin. Water levels are similar to the previous flood study results and are within plus or minus 50 millimetres in the basin, Sussex Inlet, and Tomaron Creek, up to 200 mils higher in Wandanian Creek and some isolated locations with greater differences, which can be explained by the current study using more recent bridge and culvert survey information and terrain data, which may be more accurate in those areas. It is widely accepted that climate change will lead to increases in global temperatures, which will lead to increases in the intensity of rainfall along with sea level rise. A number of climate change scenarios have been investigated in this study for both 2050 and 2090 predicted increased rainfall with current sea level as well as increased rainfall in combination with sea level rise. Tidal inundation was also looked at for existing and sea level rise scenarios.
This image shows the water level difference for the 2100 climate change scenario with 16.3% rainfall increase combined with expected 2100 sea level rise of 360 millimetres with darker blues showing greater flood level increases. Increased rainfall due to climate change has the biggest impact in the tributaries as the increased flow in the constrained channel capacity leads to increased water levels. Additional flow volumes from increased rainfall influence basin levels, while sea level rise impacts the basin and Sussex inlet areas. Flood hazard is determined through a relationship developed between the depth and velocity of floodwaters using six categories based on the stability of children, adults, the elderly, vehicles and buildings in floodwaters. Within the St George's Basin, flood hazard is prevalently classed as H6 as a result of the significant flood depths that occur. The tributaries in Sussex Inlet Channel also experience H6 hazard due to the high velocities of the concentrated flow. The depths and velocity make flooding hazardous for both pedestrians and vehicles, and buildings are vulnerable to failure. Only the flood fringe areas around the basin and the tributary overbank areas are classed as the lower H1 to H3 hazard. However, H5 hazard is mapped in overbank areas along Wandanian Creek and Tomaron Creek. For most overland flow paths, an H1 or H2 category is expected and is generally safe for people, larger vehicles and buildings. The number of properties impacted by flooding has been calculated for external overground flooding of yards and overflow flooding of buildings. Damages are focused around Sussex Inlet and Sanctuary Point, with some around borrowing and Arrowall Bay in larger events. There is expected to be almost 90 properties in total with overflow flooding in a 5% AEP event, 500 properties impacted in a 1% AEP event, and a significant number of some 2,200 in the probable maximum flood. The Draft St George's Basin Flood Study and the summary report for the Draft St George's Basin Flood Study are now on public exhibition. The flood study includes a detailed description of the study methodology and outcomes, including an extensive set of maps. Council is asking of the community as part of the public exhibition to provide feedback or comments on the draft report and provide input to what mitigation options you would like Council to consider in the floodplain risk management study and plan. The final flood study report will be completed following collation and review of submissions received from public exhibition. The study will then move to the floodplain risk management study and plan preparation. In preparation for the floodplain risk management study stage, a draft list of mitigation options has been prepared which includes flood modification options such as increased structure capacity, levees and strategic filling, emergency management such as road raising for evacuation, and planning and property measures such as house raising, purchase or land swap.